Chapter Twenty Six of the Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter Twenty Six. Exhort one another day by day. Hebrews Chapter Three, Verse Thirteen. But exhort one another day by day, so long as it is called today, lest any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin in the previous verse we read take heed lest there be in any one of you an evil heart of unbelief that is not only let each look to himself but let all look to it that there be not in any one of you the evil unbelieving heart the church is one body the sickness of one member is a danger to the whole body each one must live to care for those around him each member is entrusted by christ to the love and care of his brethren and is dependent on their help believers who are joined together in one house in a neighbourhood in a church are responsible for one another they must take heed that there be not in any one the unbelief that falls away from god they are called to help and encourage each other so that all may at all times continue steadfast in the faith in our meditation on verse six we spoke of the painful fact that in so many cases the first boldness and joy of hope is not held fast firm to the end here is one cause there is not the care and help for each other which the lord intended in caring only for ourselves our brother not only suffers but we lose much ourselves the healthy life of the individual member is dependent on the life around him and on the part he takes in maintaining that life the warning has a deeper significance than we think take heed lest there be in any one of you an evil heart of unbelief it is this thought our text seeks to enforce but exhort one another day by day lest any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin christians are bound to exhort one another it is their duty and their right it is implied in the whole constitution of the body of christ that the members care for one another its life is entirely dependent on the spirit of christ who pleased not himself and that spirit is a love that seeketh not its own but has its very being in loving and blessing others as each member humbly yields himself to be helped and to help the safety and the vigour of all will be secured the communion of saints in all our church circles must be proved in the cultivation of a practical ministering love and care for each other exhort one another day by day so long as it is called today we saw what solemn meaning there was in the holy spirit's call today if ye hear his voice we sought to apply that personally here we are taught that all the urgency that call implies must by each one of us be applied to our neighbour as well as ourselves we must think of the danger of delay of the time when it will no longer be today for those around us who are forgetting it and exhort them day by day today the work is urgent and must be done immediately it may be difficult he who commands will enable our conscious unfitness must drive us to him who can fill us with the love and the boldness and the wisdom we need day by day the work is slow and must be done unceasingly so long as it is called today the spirit of jesus can give us grace and patience and faith to persevere in due time we shall reap if we faint not day by day this word of the holy spirit is the complement of that other today the to-day of the holy spirit must day by day be afresh accepted and obeyed it is only as we are ready every day without one exception to live fully in the obedience to the voice of god and the faith of jesus that our life can grow what has once or for a time been done will not avail day by day our fellowship with jesus our consecration to him our service for him must be renewed so shall we in our care for others as much as in our personal walk hold fast our boldness firm to the end exhort one another lest any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin we heard the warning harden not your hearts here is its exposition hardened by the deceitfulness of sin 
all sin is deceit its promised pleasures are all a lie but there are some sins that are open and unmistakable there are others that are specially deceptive where the sanction of the christian world or the force of habit and custom or the apparent insignificance of what we do makes us think little of the sin it has a terrible power to deceive the professing christian and through this deceitfulness of sin be it worldliness or unlovingness or pride or want of integrity hearts are hardened and become incapable of hearing the voice of god what a call to all who are awake to their own danger to listen exhort one another day by day lest any one of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin let me press upon every one who would study this epistle the solemn obligation resting upon him to care for those around him not only the outcast but those with whom he is associated in church fellowship very specially any who are in danger of being hardened through the deceitfulness of sin the christ unto whom we are to grow up in all things is the christ from whom all the body fitly framed and knit together through that which every joint supplieth according to the working in its measure of each several part maketh the increase of the body unto the building up of itself in love our connection with the head the power of our growth unto him in all things must be maintained in our love to the members of his body around however feeble or backward and if we would know where the grace for this work is to be found the answer is not far to seek it is in jesus christ our head and in his love shed abroad in our hearts as in this epistle we study the compassion of jesus as our high priest and leader let us believe that he makes us partakers of his spirit he forms us in his own likeness he leads us in his footsteps he makes each of us what he was a priest with a priestly heart ready to live and die for those around us therefore brethren exhort one another day by day this work is most difficult but strength for it will come as for any other work first of all accept the command get the heart filled with the sense of obligation yield yourself to your master in willing obedience even though you see not the slightest prospect of doing it then wait on him for his light and strength for wisdom to know how to begin for boldness to speak the truth in love present yourself unto god as one alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness in his hands let the fire within the heart be kept burning the grace of obedience will not be withheld this epistle is an exposition of the inner life the life of faith but with this work is considered as a matter of course that needs no vindication let every christian give himself to his lord to watch over others let all the fresh grace and the deeper knowledge of jesus we seek be for the service of those around us exhort one another daily End of chapter 26.